Hey guys, it's Benny Johnson here and welcome to another iOS development tutorial. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering a theory behind iOS development and this concept is Model View Controller or MVC for short. Now, the reason I'm covering this important concept is because it is really a fundamental part of iOS development and you'll see it pop up in a lot of documentation and it's important that you actually structure your applications this way as a developer developer because in the long run maybe a new product Apple invents a new product and you'll be able to take your application and easily adapt it to that new product and this model view controller was really great for those people who actually adapted their application and started with the iPhone and then the iPad came out and with a bit of work not too much they were able to t actually take the application and apply it to the iPad so it's really important that you follow this structure and in the long run it will help you so what is model view controller well model view controller is a software design pattern it is an idea it came about in the 1970s with the invention of small talk and it has since then been adapted with many other programming languages such as object oriented languages like Java or C sharp and also web development languages such as HTML and CSS so if you are programmed in maybe one of those languages or another object oriented languages chances are you probably already have done model view controller but you just haven't had any idea of the concept and what you're actually doing as I said it is a core concept to understanding when developing iOS applications so let's get into how it actually works here are two parts of the model view controller the model is a category for any object that has data or information or does any logic so say for example you may have some data that you need to get from a web server a file or just some data stored in your app actual application so it, I would hope that you'd create objects to actually do this and get that data and these objects would go under the model so I know I haven't introduced objects and classes and that sort of thing but basically objects are just elements or part of your application that store data so say for example you have a contacts object your contacts object would store the person's name, the object, the address of that person and their actual telephone number and you have email so say for example you have the sender, the receiver, the subject and the actual body of the email and these would all, all be adapted to the, an actual object this is what object oriented languages are and again as I said the model you also use does any logic so if you got a calculator you do your calculations in an actual object and this would go under the model. Now to the right here we have the view and the view is a category with any UI element or user interface object so if you can see it on your iPhone that actual object is part of this MVC and you've already used the view parts and UI elements in the last tutorial where I showed you how to actually drag a label onto the view so again UI objects are buttons, ladders, text fields, um, table views etc etc now the core concept be behind MVC is the fact that the model does not talk directly to the view and the view does not talk directly to the model they don't know that each other exists they don't know why they're doing what they're doing they don't know anything about so the model does not know anything about the UI and how it's going to be displayed the font its data is going to be displayed it's just the data part of the application and the view it just has the kind of containers for that data it doesn't care about what data it's going to store it just has the containers and places where to put that um, data it doesn't actually contain the data in the view now there is a reason for this and the reason is you should be able to change the model without affecting the view and again this goes back to the fact that people 
again were able to actually adapt their iPhone application because they have already completed the model and just changed the view and the way the data is actually displayed and they were able to do this with minimal effort and adapt that their application to the iPad display and this is one of the most important reasons why we would actually adapt this framework to our applications now you may notice that there's a part of this that I haven't included and this is the controller remember model view controller so the controller is what joins the application together and makes it all work controller goes between the view and the model because again they cannot talk to each other so what happens when an actual iPhone application is running well in the view you may have a button on the iPhone screen and the user taps that button and when that event actually occurs the view sends a message to the controller and says so it says hey buddy my button was clicked and the controller says okay thanks thanks a lot for that information and the view goes away now the controller s takes that message and says hey I'm supposed to do something when that event occurs so it may or may not it doesn't have to get information but say for example it gets some data from the model so it may retrieve a web page or something like that and so it goes ahead and talks to the model and says I need this information and then the model gives that information to the controller so then the controller takes that information and puts it into the view and gives it to the view for the view to actually display on the application and this is how our iPhone applications work and communicate between the view controller and model so that's a little introduction on how it works and I'm sure you can get more technical if you go into other documentation this communication between our view controller and model does not happen automatically we need to create outlets for our controller to actually talk to the view and we need to create actions for the view to actually send messages to the controller and you'll do this a lot when creating iPhone applications it's kind of hard to pick up at the start but once you start getting used to it and understanding it it becomes quite easy so what are actions well these are links between the view and the controller so we need to hook up an action between when the user taps the button to the controller so the actual view can send that message to the controller because if we don't hook up that action or communication link we won't know when that button is actually clicked right or tapped in the case of an iPhone now outlets are kind of the opposite way they're connections between the controller and the view UI element object so say for example we need to access the text in a text field so we'll need to actually create an outlet or a communication link between the actual controller to that text field so we can access the text within that and manipulate its data within the controller so that's just a brief introduction in outlets and actions but basically as I said if you follow this pattern you'll be able to adapt and change the model without affecting the uh, view and the view without affecting the model so that's why we use it in iOS development and it's something that Apple's picked up and something that Apple pushes when developing applications so it is important that you understand this um, again if you really don't understand that much go read further materials and you'll pick it up while developing iOS applications. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I'll see you guys later.